I used to drive for foreign passengers every day, but in the past two or three years, I estimate I haven't driven more than 10 people. The money at the end of next month is definitely not worth it. This business has made me doubt life. I've been in business for over 10 years, and I've never experienced such a difficult January. How bad is the employment situation in Shanghai? As the Lunar New Year approaches, friends and colleagues around me are either resigning or getting laid off. The department I work in, established just over a year ago, was suddenly notified of dissolution last month. Shanghai is gradually experiencing a downturn, with around 4 million businesses closing down and over 13 million individual enterprises deregistering. The economy is sliding, and the number of unemployed people has surpassed 70 million. Farmers wearing burlap sacks are demanding overdue wages, and the middle class can't afford cemetery plots. Foreigners are leaving, and bars in Xintiandi, Huangpu District, are losing customers. I used to drive for foreign passengers every day, but in the past two or three years, I estimate I haven't driven more than 10 people. The money at the end of next month is definitely not worth it. Indeed, the service is undoubtedly better than regular rides, albeit a bit more expensive. However, the value of the higher cost is there. It's just not viable now. This business has made me doubt life. I've been in business for over 10 years, and I've never experienced such a difficult January. In previous years, people used to say January business was slow, but it's never been this miserable. This January feels like the frustrating days of July or August. It's not an exaggeration, it's really infuriating. Family members aren't exaggerating either. Moreover, there are very few people on the roads, let alone entering the store. Truly, it's time to close down. It feels like I'm on the rhythm of praising and feeling lucky. If it continues like this, you won't see me next year. How bad is the employment situation in Shanghai? As the Lunar New Year approaches, friends and colleagues around me are either resigning or getting laid off. The department I work in, established just over a year ago, was suddenly notified of dissolution last month. Either transfer to another position or leave. Being in my pregnancy period, I temporarily avoided this change, but after maternity leave, I'll likely have to face the challenge of job hunting again. From 2019 to now, it seems like Shanghai's employment environment is getting worse. Companies of all sizes are downsizing or subtly reducing salaries for cost-cutting and those unable to sustain themselves simply shut down. The wave of unemployment in first-tier cities, including Shanghai, is increasing and people frequently change jobs not because of better opportunities but because they're forced to leave. Whether the employment environment will improve after the new year, I don't know. But whether to stay or leave is a brave choice. In the adult world, there are no fairy tales. Tales. Falling to the bottom and climbing back up, these tough days will eventually pass. You may not know how bad the real economy is now. It's Saturday afternoon in the center of Shanghai, Xintiandi on Huaihai Road. The second floor children's playground in Xintiandi is showing that there's not a single person there, not an exaggeration. Even inside the shopping mall, it's deserted, very rarely seen, and extremely frightening. Many people say Shanghai is gradually becoming like Tianjin. What does it mean for Shanghai to become like Tianjin? Let's think about it. In daily conversations among Chinese people, talking about going to Hangzhou to meet two girls, chatting about live broadcasts, going to Ningbo to eat seafood, inspecting the real estate market in Nanjing, doing some small business in Wuhan, you'll hear all these topics. Suddenly, you find that you haven't mentioned Tianjin. Tianjin has become an invisible city, having no influence and nothing noteworthy, it's just a city sitting there. Many netizens say Shanghai is likely to be forgotten by China's new economic wave. The latest waves of new economies, such as new energy, new cars, new industries, big data, and artificial intelligence, aren't happening in Shanghai. If we keep traveling and working everywhere but Shanghai, it will become like Tianjin. Two factors are causing Shanghai to gradually become like Tianjin, aging and social security. Shanghai is currently the most aged city in all of China, and it's unstoppable. The core Huangpu district of Shanghai has a birth rate of less than 0.8%, which is two-thirds less than normal. The birth rate has basically collapsed. Then, let's look at the population chart on the Shanghai Metro and the Shanghai Civil Affairs Bureau. It's all elderly people, 
very few young people. The driving force is fundamentally the population. The second reason is Shanghai's social security. Shanghai's social security has reached an unimaginable level. The minimum monthly contribution is 2,600 renminbi. You should know that the current minimum wage is only 2,500 renminbi. Shanghai's social security is even higher than the minimum wage. This is a very, very frightening problem. Now, what is social security used for? It's for paying retirement benefits to elderly people. If the population structure continues to deteriorate, this huge pressure of pensions will be converted into social security expenditures. High social security, high labor costs, and strong competitiveness all come down to the problem of the newborns. Let's talk about what a birth rate of 0.8% means. With a birth rate of 0.8% in Shanghai, every generation decreases by two-thirds. Taking the current population of 30 million, after one generation, it will be reduced to 10 million. After another generation, after 25 years, it will be reduced to 3 million. Between two generations in 50 years, 30 million becomes 300 million, losing 90% of the population. A birth rate of 0.8%, if Shanghai only has 3 million people left, can it still maintain its current economic size and position? That's extremely frightening. There are experts above, and many foreign enterprises deeply appreciate the power of Chinese wisdom. It has to be said that this netizen has interpreted it correctly. When facing acquisitions in USD, other countries like South Korea, Japan, India, and the European Union typically choose to boost their domestic stock markets to prevent the low-cost absorption of domestic assets by U.S. capital. While this may seem effective, it is, in fact, a defense strategy that harms oneself as much as the enemy. However, unlike these countries, China has adopted a completely different strategy when facing USD harvest. Instead of blindly boosting the stock market, they choose to go against the tide, actively lowering their own stock market. This makes U.S. Capital feel helpless amid the seemingly endless decline. Their strategy is to let U.S. Capital keep buying in, compensating for losses and buying in again in a cycle of loss and compensation that seems endless. Moreover, they can cleverly adjust their strategies in depth, making it difficult for U.S. Capital to avoid losses even in seemingly favorable situations. This strategy not only effectively consumes the enemy's resources but also showcases the brilliance of Chinese wisdom. Truly, it is a high-level strategy. I feel that Shanghai is particularly quiet this year. It's already January, and the Chinese New Year is approaching. According to previous years, Shanghai should be very lively at this time because there are usually many tourists from other places and local consumption is high. Now, I am in a shopping mall and I want to show you its situation. It's exactly noon and this mall is in the inner ring of the city and connected to the subway. According to reason, it shouldn't be like this. The current situation indicates that the economy has not picked up yet and efforts should be made to vigorously develop the economy in the future. In the beginning of 2024, shocking news came that Bayer has started laying off employees. On January 27, Agence France Presse reported that Bayer Group is significantly reducing its workforce in China. In a statement, Bayer Group stated that the layoffs must be implemented rapidly in the coming months, with completion no later than the end of 2025. Bayer has around 32,000 employees in China, and globally, they have over 100,000 employees. This plan will cut employees responsible for management or coordination tasks, aiming to make Bayer more agile and significantly improve operational efficiency. It is reported that the largest number of layoffs will be in Shanghai, and the team will be completely cut without compensation. The last working day is January 31st, and layoffs will also proceed in Beijing, Nanjing, Chengdu, and Wuyang. I'm here in our county town for the big market again. Doing business is very, very tough. Let me tell you, it's 9 o'clock now, just starting to get crowded. These two days, there are finally a few more people on the streets, but business is really bad. I won't come back to set up a stall in my hometown anymore. Every time I used to come home for the new year, I would stay for a month, doing some small business in my hometown, earning some living expenses and money for the new year. But this year, it taught me a lesson. These noodles are difficult to sell now. Let me tell you, in the future, when I come home for the new year, I'll lie at home and play. I won't come out to sell goods anymore, lying at home every day playing with my phone, not selling anything. It's too tough. Let me show you the market now. 
This big brother next to me is selling sweet potatoes. This big brother here is selling frozen chickens and ducks. 100 yuan for four. There's also a big brother selling yams. This is the market. We are parked on the roadside. I still have so many noodles left to sell. I'm really worried. Another person came selling oranges. This cheap chicken and duck sell well. 100 yuan for four hens, 100 yuan for six ducks. Now, people's economy is not good, they can only afford cheap goods. All these chickens are frozen. Um, pulled from the cold storage, I don't know what it is, certainly not good, right? 100 yuan for four or five, right? On January 17th, a screenshot about NetEase layoffs circulated widely on the internet, stating, NetEase lays off 1,600 people, equivalent to one-sixth of the total employees. It was said last month that layoffs were planned, and it was only implemented today, but no one expected it to be on such a large scale, cutting one-sixth at once, all technical personnel from various game departments. Bloated administrative and financial positions remained unaffected. According to a report from Jimmy and News Power Plant on January 19, NetEase has been conducting large-scale layoffs since December, mainly targeting NetEase Media, with some involvement from the gaming department. The layoffs began in January 2024, affecting multiple product lines such as NetEase News, NetEase Culture and Creativity, NetEase Open Courses, etc. Positions in content, marketing, sales, and product development have all been affected, with layoff percentages ranging from 10% to 50%. At the beginning of 2024, NetEase's layoffs might not be so surprising. Up to 50% layoff ratio? In various disclosures and reports, NetEase Media is the hardest hit area in this round of layoffs. It is reported that NetEase Media started large-scale layoffs in January involving various product lines such as NetEase News, NetEase Culture and Creativity, and NetEase Open Courses. Positions in content, marketing, sales, and product development are all included. The layoff ratios for different businesses and departments are not consistent and are reported to be between 10% and 50%, according to information obtained by power plant from internal sources. The layoffs at NetEase Media not only involve ordinary employees at the execution level but also include management, with a difference in the timing of implementation.